Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the perpetuating the revolving door syndrome or the continuation of a syndrome that we've noted in the uh, penal system of individuals coming into the system, leaving the system, and yet returning to the uh, system again. And we have with us to uh, talk about the perpetuating of the revolving door syndrome, uh, an, an activist, uh, Reverend uh, Kelvin uh, Walker, Kevin Walker, uh, who has been on many occasions with us, oh, uh, Reverend yeah. Walker, and I don't think we have to explain <coughs> you to uh, our uh, guests, nor your task right. to our guests, because I think you are one of the foremost authorities in terms of uh, what we're talking about today. Uh, individuals themselves going into the uh, system and coming out and in eventually ending up in the system again. And so let's start off by uh, talking about uh, your uh, background, your education, and some of the things that were important that brought you to us this morning to uh, talk about this as a real issue. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Once again, Dr. Haney, it's always a pleasure to be on your show uh, because you, you are a person that really deal with some real issues and I appreciate the format that you, uh, format that you have out here and made a, make available to us to come on here and talk about these issues. My name is Kelvin Walker. I pastor the Hands of God Christian Church. I've been in ministry since 1986. The Lord delivered me from a 17 year drug addiction. And throughout that time of my addiction, I did spend time in the state prison system, uh, came out unrehabilitated, ended up reincarcerated again. And, uh, you know, but in 86, God changed all of that and called me from active drug addiction, a lifestyle of crime and all kind of foolishness directly into the ministry. And in that calling, you know, I developed a passion Mm -hmm. uh, for people that are lost and people that are actually mm -hmm. still involved in negative mm -hmm. lifestyles. Uh, I was born here in Nashville, Tennessee, educated in the public school systems, spent a little time with TSU, also did some uh, college studies while mm -hmm. I was incarcerated until they, they cut that out in the system, you mm -hmm. know, because I, was, I guess I was bettering myself. Okay. They didn't want that to happen. <laughs> so uh, they cut that out. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, under the Trevecca East Campus prison program, but uh, never did, uh, graduated, don't have any degrees in anything, but basically just a measure of knowledge from a lot of life uh, experiences that I have myself personally. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to the point, you know, where I am today mm -hmm. in terms of of wanting to reach out and make a difference, mm -hmm. you know, in the world in which I have to live in mm -hmm. and my children have to live in, my grandchildren have to live in, and just trying to make it a better place by addressing and attacking and challenging some of the issues that I believe mm -hmm. uh, don't solve problems, mm -hmm. but in effect create mm -hmm. the problem that is mm -hmm. supposed to be solving. And mm -hmm. that's why we, you know, on here today mm -hmm. to talk about mm -hmm. this particular situation about, you know, perpetuating the revolving door syndrome and dealing with the state prison system. Very good. You know, uh, when we look at uh, the uh, whole issue of crime in America, one of the things I think that we can always say is that uh, African Americans make up a large percentage of the uh, uh, ex-offender population and as well as the uh, incarcerated uh, population. And let's see, let's look at some of the reasons that folks have, uh, often become involved in uh, so much crime. Well, you know, first of all, it's very frightening mm -hmm. when you look at the amount of, of black Americans in the country, in America, as, as in comparison to the numbers that are incarcerated mm -hmm. and that are now ex-offenders and, and the like. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there, I mean, there's not just one single reason mm -hmm. for for crime in America. You know, it could range from just straight out need. Somebody mm -hmm. don't have the necessary things, don't know how to get it other than committing the crime and they do it. It could be the environment, it could be drugs and alcohol. Mm -hmm. Some people just low down dirty. They just commit crimes. You know what I'm saying? Just they just crime. do it. You know, mm -hmm. so there's a number of reasons why people commit crimes. But my thing is, once they do commit a crime, mm -hmm. they do go through the uh, judicial system. They are adjudicated. They are they are sentenced. They, they, are, they are tried, sentenced and they're convicted mm -hmm. and they go into the prison system. Now, the purpose of the prison system is number one, to punish you for what mm -hmm. you did. I believe okay. if you commit a crime, just like I did, mm -hmm. I should have been punished. When I went to prison, I supposed to have been there because I was a criminal with a criminal thought process that dictated that I should be in prison. So there's crime and then at the same time, there's rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. So my thing is if I'm in there for punishment now, 
the time served in the prison system will constitute the punishment. Mm -hmm. Now, what I do while I'm in that, how I spend that time in terms of uh, uh, availing myself to the various programs that's in there, that's what's considered as rehabilitation. Mm -hmm. Where the mm -hmm. problem is, those things oftentimes are overlooked mm -hmm. and we don't get the, mm -hmm. the recognition for the rehabilitation, but it's always about the punishment when it comes to the parole system. And so you believe that we ought to put more as, as we get ready for the uh, uh, first commercial break, you believe that we ought to have more emphasis upon rehabilitation more than upon punishment and that that is one of the places that we fall it's, short. It's not that we should have more emphasis mm -hmm. on rehabilitation, but we should recognize and acknowledge that, that aspect Mm -hmm. of that process mm -hmm. more so than we are just the punishment phase mm -hmm. because eventually who goes to prison gets out. Okay, and of course uh, we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break.